Um, I have a great episode today. I'm always happy to have guests from the outside. And today we have an excellent guest, our uh, North Perry Air Traffic Control Tower Manager, Mr. Cedric McQueen. Um, as we get started, I always like to uh, ask everyone that's watching us. I know that this is particularly, I think, a very useful uh, interview for anyone that lives here locally in the South Florida area that flies in and out of North Perry. So students here at Wayman Aviation or around the airport that regularly fly um, with the help of the North Perry Tower. But if we have any of our guests uh, from far afield, anyone that's uh, international or just out of town, put in the comments where you're from. I'd love to know, especially when we have internationals on the line, where you're from. And uh, also so we can kind of direct questions more towards you. And if you fly here at North Perry also, let us know. Go ahead and put it in the chat or in the comments on the Facebook Live uh, where you're from. And uh, of course, if you have any questions for the excellent Cedric McQueen, right? So this is Aviation Insights brought to you by Wayman Aviation. Uh, we're a flight school located here at North Perry Airport in South Florida, helping to launch students over South Florida for the last 33 years. If you want more information, visit the hashtag flywayman or uh, wayman.net. So allow me to introduce our North Perry Airport Air Traffic Control Manager, Mr. Cedric McQueen. How are you doing today? I'm good, Eddie. How are you? Good, good. Pleasure to have you. I know we had a little technical skirmish. I'm sorry you had to sit through that. But, it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Solved. Your problem solved, right? That's the thing pilots, with aviation. It's always something new. You know? the, absolutely. Uh, the tower, I'm sure just like pilots, we have to be adaptable. That's one of our waypoints, right? Correct. Prepared and ready to adapt. Because you make Correct. the best plans, and that's rarely what you end up executing. Exactly. And that, that's one thing we try to... Uh, that's what I tried to get across to my controllers. Have a plan, backup plan, and a backup plan. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, every time I, you think something's going to work, it might not work. So it's always best to be prepared. Right. And not to be surprised. I'm, Correct. I'm no longer surprised in the world of aviation. <laughs> um, you know, Cedric, I always like to start with the beginning when we have such a great guest like yourself. Um, you know, we've had a chance to work with you for the last several years, had you come over to the building several times, talk to our students. And of course, uh, we don't get to talk to you as much on the radio anymore because you're more running the show. But right. uh, uh, we've had a lot of chance to, to kind of get to know you, but some of our viewers might not. So I always like to know, you know how did you get started in aviation? What, when did that light turn on for you? Um, 1996, um, okay. I joined the, uh, the Navy and I went in as an air traffic controller. So awesome. boot camp, air traffic control school at Pensacola. And then I went, my first duty station was uh, Naval Station Patuxent River which is a test facility. So there I got to see every aircraft the military had pretty much. Um, I was there when the new Super Hornets came out, when the F-22 came out for testing. So that was pretty amazing. Where is that, Biloxi River? Where is that? Uh, Patuxent River, it's in Maryland, uh, just oh, south, wow. yeah, south of DC. Nice. And was it one of those, because um, I remember in high school taking like the military test, like this is what you would be good at. Was it kind of one of those things, or did you know you wanted to go into aviation? I knew I wanted to go into aviation. Nice. So, you know, my brother, my brother, my oldest brother was already in the military, so I kind of knew the ins and outs. But you know, as long as you score high on the ASVAB, you can pretty much pick any yeah, job yeah. you wanted. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I went in with the intentions of doing, air, you know, aviation. So, you know, I scored pretty high. They wanted me to go nuclear, but I didn't want to be on the sub at the time. Oh. So. Yeah, I don't know if I could if I could do that. Being a no. tight little submarine that, with crew, yeah. Yeah. that wasn't going to happen. So you almost have the opposite job of being on a submarine. Like being, instead of being right. <laughs> you're up tall in a tower with exactly. big windows. Yeah, yeah. Huh, that's interesting. So, so your brother was already in the Navy. Was he also in the aviation side of the Navy? Uh, no, he was uh, administrative. Administrative, right? Yes. So when did the aviation bug bite? Um, high school. Um, local airports just going out and you know watching airplanes and mm -hmm. saying one day I'm gonna fly that's that's yeah. the reason I went in the military because I was going to do the uh seaman admiral program so I could go into flying but all right I kind of like aviation you know air traffic better so I kind of just stuck with this and, excellent you know it, it's amazing I hear you know, being in aviation uh, my whole life right, and being surrounded by such wonderful and experienced aviators, you kind of hear the same variations of the same story, right? Grew Correct. up near an airport, uh, someone in the family was in the airport, always stared at airplanes, RCs, model airplanes. There's a few paths that kind of inspire young people 
to kind of go in that direction. Very true, very true. And, it, and it's amazing, you know, that so many young people want to fly because flying is absolutely fun. It is yeah. the it greatest is. thing ever, actually, you know. It is, it is. I've had, uh, I, I had a chance to fly aerobatic a few times. And uh, the guy that I flew with last time pitches it as a roller coaster without tracks. Very <laughs> true. I was like, man, <laughs> okay, that's one way to think about it. Yeah, that yeah. is very true. So this is kind of funny. I didn't realize you had from a Navy background because North Perry, of course, is historically, I believe, uh, a Navy uh, satellite base, right? Yes. Or, and back in the early 40s or 30s, it was a yeah. uh, Naval training facility. Absolutely. That's where you get the old wagon wheel design, yes. if you ever seen that design. Um, so wind was no option. You know, wind was not yeah. a factor. You know, you had 10 runways. Wow. Did it was that many? Yeah, it could have been at least eight. Yeah. Yeah, like eight. Yeah. That's nutty. Imagine picking the active on that one and everything crosses. <laughs> everything crossed. <laughs> but luckily, you know, it was biplanes and stuff like that. So it wasn't yeah. anything moving fast. That's true. You got more time to think about it. Just all of South Florida in general, of course, had a, that huge boost from Navy. Opalaka is known for being a huge Navy base back in the day. Glenn Curtis uh, was a big part of why uh, that really got started. So that's interesting. That Navy connection. Yeah, cool. correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we definitely want to talk about the runway pattern here. So um, so you came through ATC. And what was that? So you went through Navy. You got assigned into ATC. And then you get out of the Navy and you kind of find your way to North Perry Airport? Or did you have other assignments? Well, after, after I got out of the military, I went overseas for three years. I was in Kuwait for three years contracting oh. for the Army, um, just south of Iraq. So yeah. it was pretty interesting. Was that during the first uh, war, a desert storm? No, this was uh, 2011. So at the... Oh, okay, the second. After no, I'm sorry. This was 2000 and... Whoa, when did I go over? 2006. Okay seven somewhere around there nice yeah 2007. so i'm kind of curious what do you think is the biggest difference between operating in that military atc environment versus civilian ATC? well the one one of the biggest things is the military is so structured you know sure. um aircraft come in on the overhead you know they're going to do the overhead the brake they're going to be at this speed this altitude everything is pretty much set up you know from the uh, NATOPS, from the uh, Naval Air Traffic Control mm -hmm. Manual, pretty much, or the pilot's all... manual. So everything is pretty much structured, you know, kind of like with um, Miami, you know, they have a lot of procedures, sure. standard procedures, like like if you're doing the uh, ILS or the GPS, you know, you're going to be here, you know, unless they change it, you know, but pretty much you can expect this, unless it's slow, then they can give you something else, or if they're busy, they might change it, but the, the military is pretty structured. Sure, sure. And also I imagine, I mean, you're, you're not working with students, right? Everyone there is already a professional pilot. That's correct. The chops. They're already flying in uh, in the theater, right? So they're... Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah it's, it's no students. So, you know, yeah. it's pretty... I guess it's, it's easier to me sure. in the military. I mean, they're, they move faster, so you have to think that's quicker. Good. But, you know, with the structure, you know, Everybody's professional already, for the most part. Nobody's learning. But that's the fun part about Perry, though, you know, getting to watch the students and all the glory. All their glory, right? The good, the bad, the ugly. But you see a bunch of ugly landings all the time. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, look at that one. <laughs> yeah, we, we great. We great. <laughs> <laughs> have you put out the little numbers to pull up? Like, yeah. <laughs> we used to have a little uh, noise maker go boing, 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 boing. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we ski it up over the frequency. It used to be pretty hilarious. So, but uh, the good thing is, you see, the rough landings turn to great landings. Absolutely. So. I mean, that's what it takes. It takes practice. Like, no practice. one's you know, first 10, 20 landings are, are perfect, right? It takes Correct. a while to get that finesse. You know, I'm hundreds of hours in, and every time I go for landing, I'm like, Ugh. I did yeah. one at, uh, actually, it was me and one of our guys who's a 737 captain from Venezuela. And we were, we were on the West Coast. And the landings were so bad. We, had to, we each, the first one we had to do a go around. I was like, oh, let's, let's go around this one and try it again. But, uh, you know, it comes with proficiency. You got to be flying a lot and consistently right. to, to really get there. And Great. it's so, the same with air traffic. You know, mm -hmm. nobody comes out with a headset plugged in talking to airplanes like, yeah. you know, a god. You know, that's why I, I try to tell students, you know, we're humans too. We make mistakes. 
Um, if you hear something that doesn't sound right, ask. You know, yeah. it's never wrong to question anything. I have to say, one of the favorite things of all of our students was visiting the tower, right? right? Like, and I recommend this to anyone out there, whatever airfield you are, give the tower manager a call. It's a guy sitting in an office like you, you know, wear right. shirts, wear shoes, sometimes shirts. Right. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they're more, I mean, right now it's weird times with COVID, but by and right. large, it was pretty easy to get a tour of the tower. And it breaks down this mental barrier. You know, people are nervous to talk on the radio. It, exactly. Uh, entry level private pilot. And when you meet them and you shake a hand and you look out their window and you're like, oh, okay, I get it. You know, it right. Clicks. Yeah. And that's, I used to always recommend for pilots, you know, students to come by the facility and, and mm -hmm. see from the outside, see what we see. Because, you know, being that I fly a little, right. <laughs> not much, but a little, it's different from oh, yeah. the seat of an, an, you know, a cockpit versus control tower. So before the pandemic, I used to always recommend that people come by and visit and, I try to recommend to the controllers to take a fan flight so they can see. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, looking for traffic with, you know, mm -hmm. background clutter, you might not see that airplane. You know, it, it's different, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I try to, you know, get these guys to go take a, you know, an hour fan flight or so just to see what you see. A fan flight. We call those discovery flights or introductory discovery flights. flights. Yes. Yeah, discovery flight, instructor flight. I got lots of different names, but that's true for anyone interested in aviation. A, a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, you can just call any of these schools up and go for an hour flight. Um, I still get calls when people are coming over to do testing or to visit our pilot shop. It's like it's at the airport. Do I have to go through security? Like, how do I get into the airport? And I'm like, no, no, no. You just you know, follow your GPS. You know, right. walk in the door. It's uh, right. It's, it's it's not like you know an international airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people have that, um, that just kind of like men mentality, that, that uh, preconceived notion of airports, and don't realize how many airports there actually are. You know, yeah. I, I do a lot of career fairs. In fact, I have a career fair this coming Friday, Miramar High School. I'm going to be talking to Miramar High School um, all Friday morning. And uh, I remember going to a career fair at uh, North Miami High School when I was mostly at Opalaca, uh, which is just you know, 20, 30 minutes south of us. And talking to this girl who said, there's an Opalaka airport. There's an airport in Opalaka. She, uh, she must have been like 14, grew up there. Like, I was like, yeah, it's like a mile and a half away. She's like, really? Right. Like, where do you think all the airplanes come from? You ever seen them? Oh, I thought they all just came from Miami International. Right? You know, people, especially kids, they have a small world. You know, it hasn't really brought right. it. And, uh, and a lot of people don't realize that, yes, there, everyone knows Miami. And a lot of people know Fort Lauderdale. Right. right. But there's North Perry, there's Fort Lauderdale Executive, Tamiami, Miami Executive, Boca. Boca. It's like an it's, airport every five miles in, in Florida. It's, like every five it's, miles, it's like an airport. So. Yeah. There's seven in the immediate area. And I use Correct. this point of comparison because, of course, as you know, we have a lot of international students. And so I use this point of comparison that in most countries, uh, you know, that, that airport infrastructure is just not there. Right? right. So, for example, I'm originally from Peru. And in Peru, I believe there's now a fourth airport that has. Uh, uh, an official instrument approach, an ILS approach, right? Wow. In the in Florida alone, I believe there's 93 airports that have instrument approaches. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Big like difference. a quarter of magnitude. Like, <laughs> yeah, you'll see stuff here that yeah, you'll see stuff here that you'll never see anywhere else. Right? Yeah. So do so you come out of the military? Did you go come right to the North Perry or did you kind of try out other airports before you ended yeah, up? Yeah, so so after Kuwait, I came to North Perry. So I've been in North Perry for 10 years now. Excellent. I've been controlling for 20 something years. Nice. Yeah, so, so I've seen a lot. Your hand now. Yeah, I've seen a lot. Yeah. That's bet. where all the great comes from. <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting it too. I've been getting it too. <laughs> yeah. This pandemic is adding a lot of gray to a lot of people's hair, I think. Yeah, yeah right? exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, let's tackle that right now. So North Perry Airport, busiest uh, contract tower in Florida. Right, and I think second in the country, something like that. No, we were we were uh, the busiest contract tower in the country. Wow! Last year, yeah, three hundred yeah. and three hundred and something thousand operations a year, three hundred and change. With the team of how many? Um, I have eleven controllers. Eleven. But I'm always short, so yeah. we've been like eight controllers, seven controllers, plus myself. Supposed to have eleven. Right. So. 
um, we get it done with what we got, you know, yeah. 365, you know, we're always open. So we yeah. make it happen. And, and uh, was it that attention, that level of work that kind of led to you kind of popping up on people's radar and you got uh, ATC Tire Manager of the Year, 2000, was that 18 or 19? Uh, 2000 and what we're in 20, 2019. 2018. <laughs> my, yeah, my years are gone now. <laughs> so, 2019. I mean, that's like, that's yeah. huge in the country, right? Like right. top uh, airport uh, tower manager in the country. Um, did you just get a call one day? Like, are you in the running? Did like, yeah, I just, I just got a phone call coffee? saying, I just got a phone call and said, Congratulations. <laughs> You're great. the, uh, you know, civilian air traffic control manager of the year. I was like, oh, okay, wow. Yeah. I didn't know I was even put in for it, but you know, it's, it's great, great to be recognized. recognized. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we think that. Great yeah. to be recognized because you guys do great work, you know, for 300,000 operations across eight uh, controllers. That's a significant workload, right? Great. And uh, and you guys do a great job of it. So for those of you that don't know North Perry Airport, do I have a map here? I have a map in the other room. That it is, um, maybe we'll put one up in the edit, but it's a tic-tac-toe pattern, right? Tic-tac-toe pattern. And so you're always controlling the two active runways. And uh, sometimes you have that split frequency when it gets busy enough. Yes. Right, which thank goodness for that, because I remember when right. we used to use it. <laughs> it, used, it used to be one controller where it could, you know, 10, 12, 13 airplanes. But yeah. um, when I got enough staff and I was able to split the airport in half, and you know, one controller takes the south side, north side, or the east west runway. Mm -hmm. And it was it was pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, North Perry has become a bit is it's become a jewel really here in South Florida, it's, right? Because the big international airports, you know, they're the heavies, right? And then your Opalakas, your Florida executives, they've really become jet ports, right? Correct. Because there's a lot of business jets coming in and out of the airspace, going to South America, the Caribbean. Then you get your Super Bowls and your Art Basels and like yes, feels like every Gulf Stream in the hemisphere is here. Right. Yeah, I remember at Opalaka they would they shut down uh, nine right the training runway for, and use it as for parking. parking. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I have a pic. I might have a picture of that. I'm, I'll That'd try to send it to you. That'd yeah. Be yeah. And it, that's impressive because it's you know one of those places where you drive around the golf cart you see everything that's new like everything. oh there's a brand new umbrella. <laughs> right. It was so many airplanes down. I went down there one day. Uh, for a meeting and went to the tower and I was like, you have no parking space. Nothing. And it was it was pretty amazing. And Boca was the same way. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Boca yeah. is the same way. And they've just got that one uh, yeah, uh, runway. That one ramp. Yeah. Yeah. So that brings us to North Perry, which has become a bit of a jewel because because these airports have really become heavies and jet ports, um, all, most flight training, most Cessnas, Piper, um, home builds, they're kind of being squeezed into North Perry. Um, still some at uh, Florida Executive, uh, but they're basically being squeezed out of like the metropolitan areas, right? But it's a huge right. population center. So naturally, even though pilots are, I think I heard 2% of the population uh, have their pilot license. Yes. The, you, know, you heard the 1%, it's 2% <laughs> that are uh, pilots. Uh, that 2% of 7 million people is still a significant number of pilots. It's a significant right here. number of pilots, correct. Yeah, absolutely. And so there's I mean, been this rush to North Perry where uh, we've got hangars being built. Uh, there's a project now going up uh, on the east side, uh, oh, sorry, west side by uh, Mosquito Control. Yes. And uh, and you see it, you drive and the ramp is packed. Packed. Yeah. Yeah. They, they were out of, out of hangars, out of parking spaces. So those yeah. hangars are going to be, you know, a, a godsend pretty much. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that still want to come here. Absolutely. You know, people want to be able to fly in and out uh, in their own aircraft. You know, those that have put in the time, earned the, the privilege of flying. They, you know, we have a lot of, uh, I know a lot of captains, for example, that live in Central Florida. You know, we're talking about the, the Clewistons, the, uh, the Winter Haven space that, and want to fly into North Perry so they can catch their flight out of Miami International or Florida right. International. Likewise, some of my best students have been people that were here in South Florida but they had projects. I remember one guy who was a construction manager and he learned to fly so he could visit his projects in the Naples area and the Orlando area and still be home for dinner. Right? That's amazing. And uh, it's just an amazing, an amazing place with a lot of energy. You know, I think by my last count, there's like eight flight schools here now. It's been, uh, uh, 11. 11. I lost 11. count. I'm sorry. I thought I knew everybody. It's like, I, 
Yeah, from uh, the last report from the county, it's like 11, wow. 11 flight schools. Yeah, you know, um, and that's a wonderful thing. I remember, you know, going back to Opalaka days, my brother, who always said we, the biggest we ever were was when there were six airport, six flight schools at the airport, right? Because right. everyone was going out there, everyone was doing career fairs and airport days and saying, come on in, learn how to fly, right? And, uh, and so there's, there's room for everyone to learn how to fly. Now, a lot of those are smaller operators, you know, one or two airplanes focusing on local, right. which is great. Uh, the academy here, of course, we're more professionally oriented with the big training centers and that kind of stuff. Yes. But it's a great variety. It is, it is. And, yeah. and the group of people you meet in aviation is just amazing. Wonderful. You know, full, full of characters, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't get this anyplace else. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. No, the, the aviation world is, is kind of unique because you don't, you know, you go to a wing seminar to learn about something, and you find yourself sitting next to the owner of this restaurant and uh, correct the guy that built that, and like it's just great kind of networking environment. So, there's a huge crossover between just the business world and the aviation world. Correct. Uh, I know a lot of people that keep an office at their local FBO and they take their meetings there. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. You know, you can't, you can't get this into places. And it's really a wonderful thing for our community. So just last year, um, I was privileged along with a lot of the people that actually I see are in our Zoom call. Hey, everybody. Uh, I see uh, uh, Jerry and I imagine Tony and, uh, and a few, and Myra and a few other people in there. So we had an opportunity to form the North Perry Airport Community Association just uh, over a year ago. And that's been really interesting, kind of just interacting more with the community around yeah. the airport, right? Um, the airport's kind of fenced in, right? Everyone thinks of airport security and the airport's fenced in. But what a huge impact the airport has on the businesses right around the airport. Yes. Right? Uh, it's a big driver. Have you had a chance? I mean, 10 years here in North Perry, imagine you've had a chance to like frequent all the restaurants and all the everything. Yeah, around. pretty much everything around here. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, shout out to Don Pepe's on the north side. Right. Yeah. La Carreta and all those great restaurants. Exactly. Man, when I worked at Opalaca, it was a food desert, right? It yeah, because you have really much, you don't have much down there. Cuban sandwiches every day. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you and want you had, to go uh, to Burger King. Yeah. And Flanagan's, but that was <laughs> still far away, you know. But yeah. Perry, Perry is great because it's generally located in between a lot of stuff. You got food, you got, you know, you got everything you need here, you know. So absolutely. Yeah. It's also awesome. I, I think I, I don't recall if it was Lyndon B. Johnson or if it was Ronald Reagan who had a really good quote. Um, you can tell the health of a community by their local airport. Correct. <laughs> and I just always thought that was a great little quote, right? Because yeah, you know, if the town's booming, then that airport, people are coming in, yeah. you know, they're, they're visiting the businesses nearby, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so the association made a big push to go out and like get to know the, the, the community, the housing associations that are right next door, the businesses that are right next door. We have a, a, a senior's hospital right across the street. And I think yes. there's some great outreach there. So it's a good thing bringing down the fences. Yeah, and that, that was that was awesome of you guys because, you know, like you said, a lot of people get a perception that the airport is like totally off grounds and, yeah. you know, everybody there is like, er, but, you know, to get out and meet the community. Um, when we used to do the airport day. I love the airport um, day. Yeah, it, it was an awesome event, you know, for everybody, yeah. for the kids, just for, you know, people that was just interested in planes. Yeah, Broward County, if you're listening, bring back Airport Day. We want to do it. I mean, it's got to have to be post-COVID, of course. But. Right, right. I know they were talking about it. Well, uh, prior to COVID, uh, they were talking about doing one, but then COVID happened. So I'm sure it's going to get pushed back. But um, it was a great event, the last one we had. It is. Because they were doing fan flights. Show. Yeah, it was the car shows. It was doing the Discovery flights. Mm -hmm. um, they had the model airplanes outside you know it was, yeah. it was just yeah it was just awesome that the simulators i think the simulators were from i think they were from bc i think broward college have brought out some simulators yes. and probably also i think maybe experience aviation have brought out some of those yeah. like hot seat simulators which yes. are fun to sit in and the kids can can kind of go for it um we had our own young eagles rally last november my gosh almost a year ago now right it's almost yeah. a year yeah. so what is the what is it like in the tower when you're doing something like that? Because you got your regular traffic because nobody stopped flying, right? No. And then on top of that, we're gonna throw like another dozen airplanes full of kids at you. 
Um, it's interesting. <laughs> I mean, it, it just makes it a little, I'm not even gonna say busier um, because the events that you guys put on are kind of, you know, pretty structured. You know, we know what times you're gonna be in and out, how long you're gonna be going for. So we can sure. pretty much, you know, adjust um, the traffic patterns and stuff like that, you know. Knowing times is awesome because that's that's in the military. Everything's was speed and time. Sure. You know. Mm -hmm. So that's how everything works. So knowing times and everything like that. So mm -hmm. it's just the, the the variables that might throw something off. But you know. Yeah. Well, you were very key working with uh, I think it was was it Robert uh, that helped set up like the pattern uh, that took us out to the beach and right back in. Uh, yes. So these Young Eagles rallies, for anyone that's never been, if you have a kid ages 8 to 18, I think? Eight, eight to 18. Yeah, I think it was 18. Yeah, youngeagles.com, and you can sign up for a Young Eagles flight, which is basically a private pilot in their own aircraft or a rented aircraft, you know, will take you out for a flight. Um, and it's where well, the Young Eagles rally is when a group of pilots, usually the Young Eagles chapter gets together to do this. So we had the pilots from Tamiami come on up and teach us how to do it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but it, it was a great event. It was no no hiccups. It was it just flowed beautifully. So it was yeah. yeah on the, I think it was more stressful on the ground. I think next <laughs> time I'm going to try to take a step back and just fly it because then I'm just responsible <laughs> for myself, my airplane, and that one kid that's with me. Maybe right. two, right? But on the ground, you know, we had a little mini career fair and we had right. a table set up. The 99s uh, Women Pilots Association was talking about all these different things. And actually, we had Navy there. Navy was there because I remember they had the helmets on the tables. OK. And, uh, and, and so they were there kind of telling people about naval aviation. Um, so it was a fun one. Uh, but of course, I think it'd be better. It's better when it's part of a larger airport day where like yeah. the fences are thrown open and we've got bounce houses and all that kind of stuff. Right. That would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and we've got a great partner in Pembroke Pines. So the yes. city, even though it's it's a county, right? It's a Broward County Aviation Department. That's uh, uh, who runs the airport, runs the tower. We're officially part of. Oh, that was your video for a second. We're officially yes. part of Pembroke Pines, right? And Pembroke Pines has been really supportive. You know, there's at least three commissioners there um, who who have worked at the airport, are working at the airport. You know, come around and make a really big boosters of what the airport can be for the community. Correct. Right. I mean, and do you this, feel the support from? Uh, yeah, the of course, of course. Um, the county, for for sure, and then with the city, um, the city has been awesome. Um, I guess a lot Mayor of people Otis, don't realize what Mayor is, Otis is. You know, he's yeah. he's a, he's a great opponent for the airports, which is yeah, awesome. Mayor Frank so. Otis. <laughs> yeah, so. It is, I guess a lot of people don't realize, you know, if you're not in the aviation world, if you're not uh, aware of the aviation world, what that special role is that a general aviation airport like North Perry fills, right? They right. say, oh, there's seven other airports, but nobody does what we do. Correct, correct. And uh, like um, for like, super, you know, events like the Super Bowl and all these, we're like an overflow airport. Yeah. So that's what, that's what we're labeled as an overflow airport for, um, you know, major events and stuff like that. Uh, natural disasters, if something happened. Yeah. Um, Coast Guard helicopters, you know, um, customs. Anybody that needs to come can come. Well, as long as they, you know, not over 12,500, you know, pounds, but as yeah. long as they fit, you know, meet the uh, the uh, requirements, they can come and, you know, it's just it's additional help to the major airports. Absolutely, yeah, and just it helps our communities. Uh, I remember uh, Bahamas relief; a lot of it flew out. Correct. Of the Keys relief when the hurricane yes. two years ago went through the Keys. My brother-in-law was down there, and then they couldn't get out for like two weeks. I think. Like oh that. wow! Yeah. Yeah, the, the Bahamas relief was big. They it was a lot of flights out of here, going to the Bahamas yeah. with supplies and stuff like that. So, you yeah, know, it's great to be a part of that. Yeah, it is. It is right. And I think when they fly out, there's a special call sign, right? I remember, um, what is it? There's a special call sign saying that they're like a relief flight flying out or something like that. Because they have the compassion flights. Compassion flight. Yeah. Yeah. What, what does a signifier like that do? Does that like trigger something for ATC or just to kind of keep track of what's going on? Yeah, it, it, it lets us know that um, it's either, you know, humanitarian or um, a lot of compassion flights could be a patient 
being transported oh. for uh, surgery and stuff like that. Sure. So you, you try to give them, you know, no undue delays and stuff like that. So I'm sure everyone's kind of curious, uh, you know, the topic that dominates every conversation I have nowadays is COVID-19 and how it's affecting things. So I imagine we're not at that 300,000 we were at last year. No, um, I, last I checked, we were at 160 something. Hey, that's so not bad. It's not bad, but it's a, it's a drastic drop. I mean, we went from um, doing 1,200 operations a day, 12 to 1,500 operations a day, to at one point three, four hundred, um, yeah. six. Now we're back up to eight, nine, or a thousand. So traffic's starting okay. to pick back up. So we're like in the 60, 70 percent of where we were at the height. Yes. All right. And you know what? That's about right for, for flight school. You know, thinking about our own flight hours. Yeah, we're probably about 60, 70 percent of, right. uh, of where the flying was last year. Um, yes. So I remember, I think at, at the worst, we, we did a, the flights we really only had a full shutdown for a week, maybe two, right? When that was that first, like, we don't know what's going on, stuff's right. hitting the fan, like, you know, uh, no lights on, no toilet paper, right? Uh, right. And we're trying to figure things out. Um, and yeah, this place was a ghost town. I remember coming just to check on things. And like, oh, well, you know, middle of a Tuesday afternoon, beautiful day, yeah. like, it, yeah. it, it was bad. Mm -hmm. But we were still yeah. here. Well, you were still there? Oh, yeah, yeah, we were still here, here, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, we didn't take any days. Um, I think last time the tower closed was the hurricane last year. Wow. But, yeah. You know, I actually do remember that the one that really freaked me out when all this COVID stuff was, was really kind of kicking in was I was going for a flight with my brother, right? So he flies a uh, Cicadas, and we were going to fly up to Atlanta to pick something off, drop something off. And... Uh, I, I fly by the three strike rule, right? If three things go wrong, probably shouldn't fly, right? And like, I printed out the charts and I left them right here on this desk. Um, and then I was saying we were flying out of Pompano. So I'm like, well, there's one strike, right? And then the second strike was I think the battery. And the third strike was that that was the day that New York City went to uh, Tower Zero. Or oh yeah, ATC, ATC Zero. Zero. Yes. Yeah, and they shut down New York Air. Oh, yes. okay, that's a big sign. Yeah. Yeah. But I think what happened, somebody tested positive and right. they just got everybody out and did the cleaning yeah. to let everybody back in. You know, they were trying to get the airspace back open as soon as possible. Yeah, that was like my World War Z moment. I'm like, is this the right. end of a zombie movie? Like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, it, it was scary at first, you know, initially. Um, yeah. Very scary, but. Yeah. But you guys have been able to keep things under control, um, taking good right. precautions. And I mean, you're kind of in your own bubble, right? Because there's eight of you. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It's it's only, you know, besides their families, mm -hmm. I don't have any family here, so I don't go around anybody. But yeah, um, uh, yeah we, we've been self-contained. That's great. And, That's great. Yeah. So things are picking back up right now. I think, you know, South Florida being such an international place, you know, for example, we are about a 50-50 international domestic flight school, right? We love our domestic students. They're the ones that we love to kind of uh, uh, grow and develop and they become our flight instructors and our dispatchers and our uh, maintenance apprentices and so you know we love our, our local students but it's the international students that are here flying full-time to keep the lights on right and uh, they're mostly hampered by embassies and airline tickets and those are all opening up now which is right. such a relief right yes. uh, yeah getting students now uh, Mexico Bahamas Jamaica things are starting to pop up but it's like whack-a-mole like this one opens, that one closes. <laughs> right. And yeah. I, I mean, I think that's going to be probably the case for the rest of the year. If yeah. not longer, hopefully not longer, but yeah, at least hopefully not year. longer. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, aviation has taken a big hit. I mean, amongst all the industries, aviation has taken a big hit. And um, we're lucky that airports are designated um, critical infrastructure, right? So right. that's why you guys were open the whole time through. Right? Yes. You guys opened the whole time through, and the flight schools were able to maintain, you know, with all the precautions in place. Got my, uh, got my hand learn sanitizer. to fly hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> this is thanks to the uh, Flight School Association of North America. Um, but you know, with all those precautions, because really flying is one on one, right? It's right. you and your instructor. You know, oftentimes it's a, a family that's flying, so you're, they're already in their bubble. And so, general aviation, I think, has been able to keep um, at least a good portion flying. 
Right. Uh, cargo is doing gangbusters. Like right. a lot of our, because we have uh, airline flows right into, uh, right into certain mm-hmm. airlines and they've all just redirected and flown into Atlas and like Amazon Prime and all those kind of things. Oh yeah, yeah, they're booming. Yeah. It's the commercial, the commercial, you know, the commercial side is taking a big hit of the uh, layoffs and stuff like that, and early retirements. So do you have any thoughts on, on, on what this recovery is going to look like from, from, from your perch in the tower? Um, no, I'm just prepared to get back busy. I'm, I'm just, you know, I know it's going to be a surge um, as soon as everything's relatively back to normal. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's going to be a huge surge. And um, I've told my guys upstairs, I said, you know, we've had a little break. You've got some rest. That's It's going to be, you know, back on shortly. It's going to be back to humping. So they're mentally yeah. prepared, you know. Well, I certainly hope so. I mean, it's it's a, it's a big one, right? Everyone, everyone wants this return to normalcy. But also I find... Um, so we just had a whole safety thing uh, conference with our instructors. Our instructors are constantly doing safety training, and our chief pilot, who's now flying one of those cargos, uh, our system chief pilot, Sheik Fishik, he's uh, out there flying for Atlas Air. So I think he joined us from Hong Kong or North Korea or somewhere like that. Um, and he was telling me about the normalization of deviation, which I thought was an interesting topic, right? And that's just that the human ability to normalize really crazy weird things, right? Um, in his case, he's talking about safety. We're like, um, oh yeah, that uh, um, that aileron's always been rough, or like the you know that engine always has a little bit more of a mag drop. You kind of normalize these things that should be fixed. Yes. Right. Um, and so I think similarly in our day to day, we we're, we're normalizing mask wearing, excessive right. amount hand of hand sanitizer. Hand <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's really how we get out of here. Is that we're going to be a much cleaner species. <laughs> I, I, I hope so. Not to mention a whole generation of kids that are going to grow up as germaphobes. Right. Oh my uh, God. Yeah. Yeah. My we, we, may not, we may never have enough toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it should be it should be it should be interesting. Oh yeah. It's there's definitely some new stuff coming around. But you know what we're coming kind of coming into the last uh, little bit of our interview here. I'd like to open it up to questions. I know we had a few pre-submitted. Uh, I see Katie on the line here and I'm trying to look up her question that she sent to me. She said, what is the importance from air traffic control's perspective of North Perry Airport in the national airspace system? Uh, right. Well, within the within the NAS, um, like I said, Perry is is pretty important. I mean, we had 330 oper- 330,000 operations. So if we can sustain that amount of traffic, just to look at the traffic we took off of Miami or the ability for you to even train because if you can't you can't just go to Miami like that you know Bravo Airspace Charlie Airspace with Lauderdale you know everybody be squawking and talking so to get the amount of you know training that's needed you know touch and goes and full stop taxi bags short approaches you won't get that at, at you know places like you know Lauderdale and Miami so Perry is very important especially for general aviation I thought it was pretty crazy back in May, June, seeing a lot of GA landing at like JFK, LaGuardia, Miami right. National, yeah. like touch and go. They didn't have any traffic. So they were like, we've got to talk to somebody. <laughs> so once in a lifetime, once in a lifetime kind of opportunity right. for those of you that did it. I think uh, I think there was at least a couple of North Perry based pilots that did that. Um, so we got a question from Rick here in the Zoom. And again, anybody on Facebook or in uh, the Zoom, please go ahead and type in your, your question so we can uh, get a few here for Cedric. He wants to know why there's no lineup and wait at North Perry. It seems it would help speed things up. Well, uh, North Perry doesn't meet the FAA uh, requirements for lineup and wait. Okay. Um, we have to have a standalone um, supervisor in the tower. We don't have that position. Um, and it's some other requirements that, that's required for a uh, lineup and wait. Okay. I thought it might have something to do with the runway length. Like, you know, you want as or- much runway as you can. Well, not even that, but I mean, that is kind of a factor, but not really. It's, you know, the, the standalone supervisor in the tower and some other responsibilities that we can't provide because we don't have the manpower. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, because it's just more supervising because you've got to be very clear when someone's leaving the runway before somebody else is able to, to take off. And if Correct. you've got somebody waiting there, you get into a difficult situation. 
Yes. I've got a question for you, right? I flew maybe like um, two, three months ago and there was like a cell going around. And in, the, in my, am I doing two approaches into North Perry Airport? The runway changed three times. We went from like eastbound oh. to northbound to westbound operations. <laughs> And I was like, right. what is going on? Well, I mean, we're supposed to stay within, you know, well, we're supposed to stay with the runway most aligned with the wind. Sure. So if it's, you know, 20, you know, 10, 15 knots, mm -hmm. crosswind, you know, we don't know everybody's skill level. Sure. So it's just easier to switch the runways than to have someone come in trying to do a crosswind uh, approach or landing and then go off the runway sure. or, you know, another, you know, something else happens because uh, in the event of an incident or accident, the first thing they said was, what was the wind? What was the runway? Sure. So sure. that's why we switch like that. We, we <laughs> hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking out for everyone. You're looking out for everyone. Right. Correct. And, and that makes a lot of sense because I remember, so when that happened, I talked to our chief pot about it. And he's like, well, Florida usually follows Miami International. Like, whatever Miami International right. is doing, Florida usually, usually follow each other. And so Opalaka as well. Opalaka follows them, right? So everyone's kind of facing the same direction. He's like, the North Perry just has its own thing. <laughs> because because they don't have the North South runways. Yeah. That we have. No, I so, think it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. They don't have the ability to just say, you know, oh, the wind's 010 at 15, let's go north. You know, yeah. They don't have that. So, um, yeah. The thing that was great because you, you as, a, as a low time training pilot, you never have like a crazy crosswind. Right. That bars you from going out and flying, which yeah, is so, huge, you know? Especially yeah. when we got, got to make the most of it when it's raining every other hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, switching up the runways like that, it, it can tend to lead to confusion sometimes, sure. especially if somebody's been on 10 right for, you know, the last 30 minutes and then now they got to switch. But you know, it's, it's good training, but um, it can lead to some confusion. So if we don't have the switch, we try not to. Um, it's usually like a five, you know, five knot wind component. You know, if it's five knots or, you know, but it's 10, 15, 20, we're going to switch. All right, all right. Um, so Rick also with a follow-up question about run-up areas. Uh, everyone runs up on the taxiway. If, uh, if there's any solution to that, if there's a run-up area, People should run well, up on their Well, um, they have a construction in the future. It was supposed to start last year, but um, I'm not sure when it's going to start. They're going to do a run up area on Lima um, right. near Bravo Taxiway. Okay. So on the on the east side of uh, 01. Right. Nice. So, yeah, okay. so one, one, one left will be shortened and they'll cut off that that 10 right entrance part. So you know you have to go one left to get the 10 right. Yeah. Yeah, they go cut that L out, that bend. So it'll just be a run up area, then taxiway straight to 10 right. To get the one left, you have to cross somewhere. But so run up areas are coming. Run up areas are coming. Yes, they are coming. They're proposed. proposed. And they, they started the plans. They they had the plans. I think um, the person at Broward County that was in charge left. Oh. So they had to start over. Oh. Yeah, so. Yeah. It's going to happen. I'm just not sure exactly when now. I am. Um, it's it's kind of a, it's, it's bittersweet. Like, you know that these improvements, these upgrades to the airport are coming. But they always seem so far away. So far away. by nature, it's right. the bureaucracy because it's a government uh, kind of thing, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. so actually, you know, well, here's a curious question for you, right? Because. A lot of people don't understand the difference between like the contract tower, FAA towers. You know, it was something that I was introduced to at Opalaka. But, um, you know, is, is there any way you could kind of would summarize like the differences? At, at one point, North Perry got designated a contract tower or a sign. Correct. Um, I think somewhere in the late 80s, early 90s, I think, um, the FAA went into a, a save money plan, I should say. Sure. So towers that were, they went by traffic count. So towers that did less than this amount of traffic, uh, they went to the federal contract program because mm. it's, it's less staffing than a FA facility. So, and, you know, it's just cost perspectives, you know. 
So the government class got in. Yes. So Perry went contract. I think it's like um, two hundred and seventy something contract towers in the nation now. That's quite a bit. Yeah, it's uh, quite a few. I think it's two. I can tell you. It is two hundred fifty six contract towers in the nation. So um, it just went by traffic and you know cost savings for the federal government. Um, we're 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 we have less staffing, but yeah. you know some places only do forty thousand operations for the year, which uh, makes sense. Yeah, that's true. You know, we're it like, makes sense. Doing that. Yeah, right. So. That's true. And at the time, you know, probably North Perry was one of the four or five airports in the area that did more GA. Right. right. So, and that's yeah. got squeezed. North Perry has jumped up. Yeah, so, we didn't. Every, um, when I first got here, we had one air taxi um, company, the Twin Cows. They used okay. to be parked at uh, North Perry Central All right. before it became North Perry Central. It was an air taxi. They used to fly every morning from here to Fort Lauderdale okay. uh, International. That's um, a short little flight. <laughs> yeah. But they, I didn't know where they went after that, but they would leave here oh, and go to Lauderdale. The base then, here, everything was like, yeah. 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 And then you guys were at Opelika at the time. We have so, been down there 33 years. Yeah. yeah. So. Excellent. Well, hey, Cedric, as we're coming to the end of our hour, you know, so much of the population here at North Perry is uh, is students and people that are learning how to fly and making those steps from the tower I mean what nuggets of advice would you give someone that's you know starting their aviation adventure learning to fly here under your eyes um, initial contact uh, when you first call the tower who you are where you are what you want um, that helps us plan better instead of asking a thousand questions um, you know, just, just tell us what you want, who you are. Um, if you have a question about any instructions given from the tower, ask, you know, sure. if, if you feel like, again. you know, if they told you know, always better to be safe, you know, mm -hmm. if they told you 10 left, but normally you go to 10, right. Or they told you 10, right. In the beginning on the initial check-in and then 10 left when you reach three miles, be like, Hey, uh, What's up? Did you switch me? You know, I'm saying because, you know, it happens. You're, we're, you know, people talking, and you meant to say ten right, but you said ten left. So, if you have anything, question it. Um, don't be afraid of controllers. We're humans, um, just like you. Like I said, you know, everyone here is either military, ex-military, or ex-FAA. So it's a lot of, a lot of, a uh, lot of years of air traffic. Yeah. So um, if you feel like anybody's downgrading you or talking bad on you, call me at Perry. Right. Putting yourself um, out there. Watch out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying, I mean, this is, we, we are customer based service. This is customer service, no matter how you look at it. Yeah. We're providing service to you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, that service is supposed to be enjoyable. Like I say, plan is supposed to be fun. Um, it's a great career, mm -hmm. but you know, if you fly on the weekends or a private pilot, it is supposed to be, you know, fun. So if someone is being, you know, a jerk, let me know, <laughs> let me know. Well, you know, there's a lot of stress in the tower too. So we, yeah, it, yeah. it is a stressful environment. It yeah. is a stressful environment, but you know, at the same time, like I said, it's a lot of experience. So mm -hmm. deal with it. So, so my takeaway, your advice there is communicate, ask questions, ask them to repeat stuff. Basically, don't be afraid to ask. Right. Don't be afraid to ask. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think human. a lot of that, when, when the COVID restrictions come up, do visit Cedric and the team at the tower. Right. I think that helps to take away that like fear of asking as well. Right. I'll, 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 I'll definitely let you know whenever they lift the um, visit, visitation restrictions. That way you can let everyone know. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Well, yeah. We'd, love, we'd love to do it again. Um, so, Cedric, thank you so much for joining Insight in the Aviation. Uh, for anyone that's watching the this later on YouTube or on Facebook, you know, leave us your comments, your questions uh, here, because we can always ask uh, Cedric the next time around. Uh, right. We can get some responses out there for you. So, uh, thank you so much, Cedric, for joining us. Thank you for everyone here in the Zoom, everyone watching uh, online on the Facebook. Uh, you know, keep it going. I look forward to seeing you up in the air. Likewise, thanks for having me. Hey, my pleasure.
Thank you, everybody. Take care. Fly safe. Bye. Thanks.